When you initialize an instrument, an empty MIDI object is initialized with it. You can either start editing the object by defining the buffer size and inserting events, or by inserting a whole MIDI file. The MIDI object can be saved as well. In today's video tutorial, I will show you how saving a MIDI file works. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash adsrtoots. You can only use one MIDI object at a time within an, an instrument. The MIDI object is held in memory and can be accessed by any of the script slots. It is possible to add, remove, and edit MIDI events within the object, as well as import and export MIDI files. The multi-script can also hold one MIDI object and handles it the same way as an instrument. If you want to create a MIDI sequence from scratch, you first need to assign a buffer, which effectively creates a number of inactive MIDI events. From this point, you can activate, or rather insert, and edit MIDI events by using MIDI event commands. MIDI objects can be exported from contact either by using the save MIDI file command or via a drag and drop enabled label element. In either case, it's possible to define the export area both in terms of start and end times as well as the start and end tracks by using MF set export area. MIDI events and contacts MIDI objects are given event parameters which are accessed using MF get event parameter or MF set event parameter. A unique event ID can be used to access a specific event or you can navigate through events by position. The event ID is assigned whenever a MIDI event is created or loaded. So to save a MIDI file, we use MF set export area. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So the first parameter is name, the next parameter is start position, the next parameter is end position, start track, and end track. So MF set export area, it defines a part of the MIDI object that will be exported when we use um, a drag and drop area or the save MIDI file command which we'll be, we'll be using today. So the name is, is the name of the exported file. The start position is the start position in ticks of the export area. Um, if you want to use the start of the MIDI object, just use negative one. The end position, this defines the end position in ticks of the export area. Use negative one to set this to the end of the MIDI object. The start track defines the first track to be included in the export area. You use negative one to set this to the first track in the MIDI object. And end track defines the last track to be included in the export area. And you use negative one to set this to the last track of the MIDI object. And the final command that we'll be using today is save MIDI file. And this one is actually pretty simple. You just pass in the path of the MIDI file you want to save. And save MIDI file, what it does is it saves a MIDI file with the range that you specify by using MF set export area. All right, so let's uh, see how this works in, in actual use. So we have our n, we have our init. Um, this will only have a label and a button, so we don't need to use perfu. Um, you can if you want to. I'm going to set the script title to my save MIDI UI. Actually, I'm going to go, going to go ahead and make perfume. Clear the message. OK, so I'm going to declare path. I'm going to set the path equal to my desktop.
now I'm going to declare a text edit field. I call it file name. And this is a new new um, user user interface element that we haven't used so far. Um, this field is basically a text box, but allows you to edit edit the text box um, when when at runtime. I see a typo already. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the the string of the text box just to empty. I'm also going to set the font um, set the font type. So to do that, I use set control parameter string, and I need to get the user ID, the the UI ID. of the um, text box and then I need to specify what it is that I want to um, set so I want to set the control parameter text and now I put what I want it to be so I'm just gonna put empty And next thing that I want to do is I want to set the control parameter um, font. So I'm going to do set control parameter. I need the UID. Let's say at file name. I'm going to specify the parameter that I am trying to set, which is par font type. I set it to 25. And then I am going to make this persistent so that once you type in the name, it remains. All right, let's see what this looks like. So there's an error. Par. There we go. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to move the um, the text box. So I'm going to move it in pixels. Oops, file name. All right, so I did that. Next, I'm going to declare a label. All right, and the reason why I'm using a label is to give the the text box some uh, like a little background coloring. I'm going to clear the text of the label. To move this a little bit okay now I'm going to declare a button. I'm going to call it save. I'm going to move the control. Oops. 
I do wrong? Typo. All right, so now I have a save button. And now I'm going to declare an ID to store the ID of the save file. I'm going to call this save. Oops. So save MFID. And I am going to set MFID equal to negative one. Okay, so that's it for that. Okay, so now I need to handle the save button. So I'm going to use on UI control. I'm going to pass in the name of the button. Save MIDI file. I pass in the path and the file name and an extension of MID for MIDI and that's it for the save button and I need to handle the async complaint to know when the file has been saved so I use async complete Okay, so I need to check if if async complete ID equals the ID of save MF ID. Okay, so if it does equal, then the file was successfully saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, set the save MFID to negative one to reset it. And then I'm also going to set the um, the actual button status back to zero. Okay, another thing that I can check here is I can check to see if there was an error. So I do that by checking NI async status, or I'm sorry, exit status. So if it's zero, that means there was an error. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a message. And if it's not zero, that means the message with the MIDI file was saved successfully. So I'm going to write a message. All right, let's give this a try. And here we go. Save MIDI file. Bingo. And as you can see on my desktop, this MIDI file was saved successfully. Although in a specific example, I didn't use um, set export area. Um, there's a couple of things you should keep in mind. Um, since I didn't, it's going to take the entire MIDI object, which is fine for what we're doing. 
um, here, but if you want to specify the um, the area, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. If you use a start point that has a value greater than the end point, the values are going to be swapped. Um, also, when you invoke the command, um, all the events in the range are going to be checked to see if they're valid. Um, the command will return zero if all the events are valid. Um, otherwise, it'll return the event ID of the first um, invalid event. So you have to do some some checking when you when you specify when you use MF um, set set export area. So keep in mind that in Contact 5.2, the MIDI file handling has been significantly updated. Commands and working methods from earlier versions are still available for backwards compatibility, but for purposes of this tutorial, we use the newer methods. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds. ADSR contact tutorials supercharge your contact skills. This is DJ Nice signing off until next time. I go make some music.